Well guys, I've got a boroscope and we're getting ready to go inside this 4.6 on this 97 town car. That's right guys, we've got a boroscope and we are getting ready to dive inside the engine on this 97 Lincoln town car that I picked up for 500 bucks. Before we go any further, I wanna thank you guys for watching that video. It went up only seven days ago from the recording of this video, and you guys have made it go well over 10,000 views. I've never had a video do that on my channel, and you guys seem to just love these old Panther platforms. Well, we've got another video coming your way, so let's dive in, get the spark plugs out, and see if we can find some bent valves, or maybe not on this 97 town car. All right, so we've gone and got the spark plugs out. We've got our boroscope ready to roll. I've been down each cylinder and let me show you what I found out. So as we go down into cylinder number one, we can see a little bit of a mark right there at the bottom or whatever that is, the top of the piston. Uh, looks like the valve has kissed that piston. We go over to cylinder number, I don't know what it is, whatever Ford calls the second one back here. And we definitely got a kiss on the piston right there at the bottom of the screen. I don't know if I can get down close enough for it to, uh, to stay focused. But right there, it's definitely hit the valve. We go over to cylinder three or whatever the third one is back here. And other than carbon, uh, it looks fairly clean. And cylinder behind it, the last one on the driver's side, I gotta learn my Ford so I know what cylinders to call them. Uh, other than that little mark right there, that's where the camera went down. That cylinder looks like it's pretty close to top dead center, so I can't really get down and take a look at it. I'm gonna try and wiggle that camera around on those first three cylinders to see if we can actually uh, look up at the uh, valves to see if they're bent. And if I can't get any good visuals, then what I'm gonna do is uh, see if I can get that valve cover slid out there. Maybe we can roll the, the uh, cam around and see if any of the valves move with the cam. They should be able to move back up into the closed position. Otherwise, um, We'll know if they're not moving at all that they that they're bent. Um, the goal here with this video is to be able to do some sort of a compression or leak down test. In order to do that, we've got to get this thing lined up on its timing marks. And what that means is taking apart the fan shroud, the fan, all the accessories off the front, so we can get at that timing cover and uh, get in there, line all those timing marks back up. Uh, it shouldn't be too difficult. They're, they should be labeled very well. And uh, then we'll kind of go from there. In the meantime, I'm going to see what I can find out more with this boroscope. If I find anything cool, I'll be sure to get you back in there and take a look. So we're down here on this uh, second cylinder. One, two, three, four, five. Cylinder number six, I believe, I found something neat that I can actually read how much the uh, block must have been bored out. I don't think these things are 50 over, but that's a 0 0.50 on that uh, piston. So the work's been done. And I think if I kind of move the camera around a little bit and come back to cylinder number one, you can still see <clears throat> or clearly see uh, some cross hatching on that cylinder wall. So work has been done on this engine. And it looks as though with 430 whatever thousand kilometers, um, 265,000 miles, that this thing has had some work done to it. So um, I'm not sure what happened with the timing chain, why it popped off. Again, I believe it's a tensioner failure. So whether they replaced it or they didn't replace it one way or the other, I believe it failed. So um, that's as far as I got with it. I cannot get the camera to twist up and look back at the valves. So I think at this point, we're just gonna see if we can retime it and do a leak down test and uh, see what the results are. So let's get tearing this thing apart.
That was a lot of effort. My soul. I am sweating like a pig. Well, now that we got that cover off there, and lots of dirt down in there, at least we got a gasket that uh, we can just set that aside and we we'll reuse that. Might as well save a couple dollars. And that will just kind of come out of there like so. Just throw that over there. Let's get down in here with the flashlight and see what we can find out. All right, so there's the cam position sensor. So that piece right there is the tensioner and the chain is kind of caught up in behind it. And way down there is the guide. So the guide shouldn't be there. It should be up against the tensioner, I believe. So the guide is not in the right spot. The guides are white, which tell me they may have been replaced because usually if they've been in the engine for a while, they'll look kind of a orangey amber color. Um, we come up here and we see where our dirt has fallen in um, all the way down. We're going to see if we can rotate this cam a bit and see if some of these uh, lifters push up uh, when they're supposed to be up and maybe they stick down when they're not supposed to be. And it was, remember, it was cylinder number five, I guess, one, two, three, four, five, six, maybe this is number six, um, that had the big score on it uh, where we feel like the piston came up and hit. So let's uh, see if we can turn this thing at all. And that looks like about a 17, no, 18. Yeah, so she's bound up on something right there. And I'm guessing it's that cylinder number four because it was all the way up. Let me turn the motor over and see if we can uh, get that not cylinder number four, number eight, all the way back down. All right, so I was just rolling that around. And this happened. So there's your rocker arm. That just jumped out of place. And it came off of cylinder number right there. So I don't know if that's the way it's supposed to happen or not, but I'm thinking not. Anyways, that one there just popped right out. So it looks like we're at least tearing something apart here. I'm gonna have to clean this up. We got rust all the way back in there on that one. I don't wanna be turning this thing over anymore, I guess. Get some rust in those rockers and uh, break something. So we got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So this is, I would say, the intake valve for cylinder number six. That's what I'm going with. Anyways, looks like she's coming apart, guys. Well, we're not getting that off without either A, taking the cam off or taking the timing chain cover off. I think it's the cover's gotta come off. Uh, so we can get in there. And it looks like there's two things holding us up from doing that, three things. Passenger side valve cover, water pump, and the power steering pump, four things crank pulley. So, Mm, I guess we've got to keep diving. All right, so I don't know where we left off from the last time I spoke, but uh, we've got the other valve cover off on this side, and we've also got the uh, timing mark lined up on the crank, and you'll see that there's a little notch back there, and we've got that lined up with TDC. When we do that, it brings the timing mark, as you can see by the little dot right above the S, pointing where it's supposed to be, but I don't have any guideline as opposed to that black link which is supposed to be lined up with that dot now that could just simply be the rotation of the crank so we are going to mark that link that it's at right now and when we come over here well we really don't have much to worry about but i think from what i can see online this needs to be way down there 
because the timing mark is that little dot right there and it should be kind of up in this direction here somewhere. So the only thing that's standing in our way now is this crank pulley, which we're getting ready to take off and the power steering. And that's gonna be a pain in the arse because there's a couple of bolts. There's uh, one that goes up this way, like this way into the timing cover. And it looks like there's another one down the bottom. And of course you got all these freaking hoses in the way. So we're going to have to get the lower rad hose off and then kind of slide that power steering uh, return line out of the way and uh, mess around with that. But uh, it is getting late here tonight and I'm getting pooped. So we won't, we won't mess with this a whole lot tonight. I am going to get the uh, puller and get that crank um, off there. So let's set the camera up and we'll get that done. And guys, if you haven't already and you're really enjoying this content, please give this video a like and uh, go ahead and hit that subscribe button because I'm trying to build the channel and you guys seem to like all this Panther Platform content. It seems like it may be the focus of the channel for the next little bit, uh, even though I do have the Yugo, which we're going to be doing an engine swap here over the winter. Uh, I'm going to try and interlace the two of them together. So hopefully we can get this one done very, very quickly and be driving it long before we ever tackle the Yugoda, which is the Yugo with a Toyota drivetrain. Anyways, hit subscribe, hit that thumbs up. We'll be right back. Now, one of the things I like working over here in this shop is having the right tools. We've got a harmonic balancer or a pulley, puller, what do you want to call it? And before I ran, got this thing set up, I took the uh, bolts that go into the screw holes uh, down here and I just chased them out, got rid of some dirt and sprayed it with some penetrating fluid, make sure that everything goes in there. Uh, nice and even or nice and easy without having to uh, worry about uh, you know, grinding on some threads and it just kind of goes in there nice and you know, finger tight and whatnot. I did manage to drop one down in the antifreeze pail. Oh, where'd you go? And of course the washer came off. At least it'll be lubricated before it goes in. Now, there were a lot of you guys in the comments of the first video on this car um, who felt that it was timing chain related and that I should have checked codes before I did anything. And yeah, I probably should have checked codes. You know, I do have a shop, I do have a code reader, and I should have figured out exactly what the heck was going on. And it might have pointed me in a direction before I went and you know, ruined a catalytic converter and, you know, cut my exhaust, and, you know, did a bunch of useless stuff. Uh, but at the end of the day, I think we kind of came to the same conclusion and uh, we're here. We're, uh, we're getting ready to pull this uh, main pulley off here, this uh, harmonic balancer or crank pulley, whatever you want to call it and uh, get to the bottom of, you know, what's going on. Now, one thing I've learned in the past is that when you go to put these things on, you want to make sure they're tight, but you don't want to go so far in that you're up against the aluminum timing cover because, well, obviously you don't want to crack it. We've got that on there good and tight, so now we can kind of uh, get our ratchet on there and start pulling off the pulley. Just like that. And now we get to deal with the power steering. Hey, buy a panther, they said. It'll be fun, they said. So I was watching another video, trying to find out, uh, once we get the pulley off, how we're gonna tell where the tummy marks are. Well, if you've got your keyway here, uh, and you've lined up the pulley with top dead center, it's gonna line up with 10 degrees before top dead center. So if we kind of drew a line right straight down there, uh, you've got that 10 degrees before top dead, and it's lining up with the keyway. But he also said something about once you get the timing cover off, you'll be able to see your marks on the chain. Then this keyway will actually line up with the 30 degree mark. It'll go from there to the 30 degree and then kind of line right straight up uh, the cam. So we'll see if what he says is true. 
back to our regularly scheduled program with that stupid friggin' power steering. Well, I decided not to tackle that power steering tonight. Father's back is just about screaming. Uh, but we did get all the bolts out of the timing cover uh, around here, down around the water pump, over here. Um, and there's four bolts that hold the oil pan on up, going up this way uh, into the bottom of the uh, timing cover. So tomorrow night, we're going to come back with a fresh back, hopefully, and uh, be able to get in there, get those bolts out, get that power strength. All we need to do is just get the bolts out and just kind of, you know, just drop it that way. So once we get that done, uh, we should be able to just take this uh, timing cover, pry it off, because I think the only thing that's holding it there now is the gasket and a little bit of silicone up here where the uh, valve covers were, and down along the oil pan. So, um, so hopefully in just a few seconds for you guys, we'll be uh, tackling that power steering pump and getting this uh, timing cover off. So we can kind of get back to exactly what we tried to start here tonight and that's getting the Tommy March re-lined and make sure there's nothing broken and see why the tensioner that's supposed to be here is like laying down here. All right, we're right back. So it's the next day and I had some time to spare here this morning and we got the timing cover off and what a bugger it is to get that power steering. There's four bolts and they all go up this way and like zero room to work. Talk about frustration. We get in here and we see the chain is kind of wedged up into that tensioner. I think we can probably get that out of there. But uh, there's the culprit right there, the guide wedged down in there. And this one here, oh, look at that. It's coming right off. Uh, I'm not sure if that's broken because it wore through or if um, it was a result of the chain being out of a line, but uh, those are a little more orange than I think they should be for something that was just recently replaced. They should be fairly white. So my guess is that none of this got changed. Uh, I can't say that for sure, but I think we're gonna have to do that now, but uh, I'm gonna attempt to realign everything and get the timing marks all set up. That way we can do a compression test and see uh, what we've got for bent valves, possibly. So I'm going to get this done, and uh, I'll see if we can crank over and do a uh, compression and leak down test. Do you really I do. <laughs> I do really want the video of you and me together. My brothers. Okay. <laughs> Guys, we got Tom here. He's uh, come over tonight uh, just to lend a hand on the Lincoln. And I was kind of just giving him an overview of some of the things that were going on with the car, and... I think we found what the problem was, and I'm not sure if it's a result of the timing chain coming off or it's the cause of the timing chain coming off. Let's take a look. So I'm gonna uh, get the camera down in here. I'm gonna get Tom to squeeze on that tensioner, and I want you to see the oil leaking out the side of it. That's cracked right there where Tom's finger is. And every time we squeeze on that, when that gets full of hydraulic or oil, um, Air yeah, you can hear the air coming out, but it's, I don't know if that was the problem that led to the chain coming off or if the chain coming off, you know, and being wedged back in here caused that crack. So anyways, we know that we're going to have to at least replace this tensioner and um, I mean, we're going to replace it all if we can salvage this engine, but if not, we're just going to swap an engine into it and not worry about it. In the meantime, I'm going to grab the uh, flashlight. We're going to get down, line up these timing marks on the crank and try and get this thing lined up properly and uh, do a leak down test. See if we got some bent valves. I'm guessing cylinder number six is, is going to be the bad one. So I was just explaining to Tom about the timing marks. These chains have two black links, uh, one that lines up with the timing chain on the crank and then one that lines up with the timing mark here on the cam. So, because we can't see exactly back in there, um, we are gonna have to almost guess, and we can roll that back, like so. He's smart. Smart with the front. 
what Carter would say. Big brain, big brain. All right, so we didn't have a little pin to stick in there, so we used a zip tie instead. So we're gonna get the bolt started. Um, we're gonna get this tensioner on there first. We're gonna do with that. There's that tensioner, the guide. Come on now, what do I do with that? Oh, we dropped it in the uh, tank. What's uh, this weed? Remember? We dropped the tank, so therefore we get cleaned off. Yeah. <laughs> we sure I'm using our rag. Yeah. <laughs> but, Where's your forward steps at? Side cutters, Tom. Side that's what we call them in Canadian. Right. Let's get our leak down tester and test. Let's start testing this bank of cylinders and see where we are. So Tom was just asking what a cylinder leak down test was, and I tried to explain it to him, but he's so Ooh, freaking freaking fat. American. <laughs> you said it, not me. <laughs> I I thought that's the direction you were going. So all we're doing is we're threading this hose into the spark plug hole. Potentially, if it'll actually throw it in, maybe I got the wrong adapter on there. The BFSA holder. Hold it straight, damn it! Here, here! You take her in after your mother. <laughs> <laughs> straight in. Can't get it in the hole straight. Everything. Everything. <laughs> Everything is recorded. So. Everything is recorded. Uh, You're going to do a good job deleting this, right? Uh, or editing I'll it? edit it. Yeah. <laughs> so we both look real smart. It's too floppy. The hose is too floppy, Tom. It don't want to go in there. Son of a... What's going on over there? I don't know. You suck at holding the flashlight, by the way. Well, where would you like me to put it? I think a few places. I know what's wrong with it. <laughs> <laughs> so, the problem we were having with getting this hose from the leak down test down in there was the threads are just too short. The spark plug threads have like, I don't know if you can see it on camera or not, but they got quite a bit of thread on them. So this was going down into the little hole but wasn't catching dog with the threads. So we were trying to think, how can we overcome that? Well, I went and I found Tim's uh, compression tester and he's got the adapter on it. So it's got quite a bit more thread on there. So we can thread this down in and use it on our leak down. So Tommy says I have a big brain, big brain. So we do that. We're going to plug that into that and our compressed air. Whoop. Well, I'll be the first to admit when I'm stumped. And Tom and I have just been frigging around with this um, leak down tester. I've used them before and they worked exactly how they're supposed to work. Put the cylinder on top dead center crank up the pressure on your control grate gauge to 100 and your cylinder pressure will tell you what the what the pressure is in there and all it's doing is staying at 100 we tried over here on the passenger side bank on cylinder number one it doesn't move with the compression or the leak down tester connected we rotated the engine so that the valves would open thinking we would lose pressure it didn't do that I don't know what the heck is going on here. Maybe I'm overseeing or, or, or overthinking or something. I don't know. I don't think I'm, <laughs> I don't think I've missed it, but I'm also tired. And uh, Tom's been making fun of me all night. So <clears throat> I think it's time to call it quits. We're going to uh, maybe go have a cold drink and uh, come back at this tomorrow with a fresh set of brains and see if we can figure it out. Well, it's now Wednesday evening for me, and last night, which was just a few minutes ago, you guys watched Tom and I struggle a little bit with 
getting the compression or the uh, leak down tested to work. Well, there's a reason for that. And let me show you. So the problem we had last night was that the uh, threads on the leak down tester hose were too shallow. They wouldn't go down in. So the hose for our compression tester had the extension on it. So we switched over the hose or the, uh, yeah. So we switched over the hose to use on this, not cluing in that the compression tester has a check valve to not let the pressure off until you hit this little button here. Duh, Jason. Ooh. So I come in this morning and I asked my mechanic, Tim, what am I doing wrong? He says, oh, geez, I don't think you're doing anything wrong. Let's try it. So we tried it and he says, oh, well, I know what it is. He says, you're using the hose for the compression tester. It's got the check valve. So what we ended up doing was taking the adapter off the check valve hose, putting it on the compression or leak down testing hose, and we were able to do a leak down test. So let me duplicate that test for you so you can have the results. I'll try and do this so you guys can see it. So then we start applying pressure all the way up to 100. And cylinder number six is only showing about 30% on that gauge. So we know that, then we can hear it. We can hear it hissing. Uh, so we know there's a problem there. I'm not even gonna bother checking the rest of them because I know the head has to come off in order to fix this issue. And it is, I believe, an intake valve simply because I can hear it coming through the throttle plate here. So guys, I really appreciate you sticking through this video as long as you have. We'll be doing some videos on all this. We'll be, you guys can follow along every step of the way and uh, see where we are. Hopefully within a couple of weeks, we'll actually be able to drive this thing down the road. Uh, and, and I'm really looking forward to that because you know I've never owned uh, a Panther this old. This is uh, this being a 97, it's the old style front suspension. It's got the air ride in the back. And I, you know, I've just never wrote, ridden one uh, with the air ride. So looking forward to getting this thing going. Uh, if you guys haven't done so already, I really encourage you to hit the subscribe button uh, because we're gonna have lots more Panther platform content coming out uh, real soon following this build as well as we tear apart the O2. So uh, if you like Panther stuff, Obviously you do, you guys have been watching the crap out of these videos. And my last video hitting uh, well over 14,000 views in the first week. Thank you, that was awesome. Let's get this one to do the exact same thing. So, so thanks for sticking with us. Stay focused on the windshield, not the rear view mirror. I love you guys, God bless. Do it again real soon. Oh, can't wait to ride this thing.